Day 9 of the Ukraine invasion, our worst fears are coming true. Nuclear plants are coming under attack. We told you about this yesterday, about the threat of a nuclear disaster. Yesterday, Russian forces surrounded Europe's biggest nuclear plant. The world repeatedly warned Moscow that under no circumstances should a nuclear plant be targeted. But the Russian forces apparently did not listen. Look at these CCTV videos. Can you see the flashes? That's the forces shelling the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Soon enough, a fire broke out. Blasts at the site lit up the night sky. Thankfully, the fire was contained. None of the active reactors was harmed. But can the world afford to take these chances? There are no two ways about this. Nuclear plants cannot become battlegrounds because even a minor mishap will lead to a major nuclear catastrophe. A disaster bigger than Chernobyl and Fukushima. Ukraine is already accusing Russia of nuclear terrorism. Is Moscow playing Russian roulette with a nuclear plant on Gravitas tonight? We will bring you the full story. First, let's tell you what happened at the plant. Russian troops shelled this nuclear plant in, south, in southern Ukraine last night. Later, they took control of the site. The fire broke out at a training building. The world came dangerously close to a nuclear disaster. Reports say one of the six reactors caught fire here. But it was under renovation. It was not operating. Only one reactor is running at this facility right now. So a major calamity has been averted. R Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, was quick to raise an alarm. Dressed in military fatigues, he urged the West to wake up. Europe has to wake up now. Europe's largest nuclear power plant is on fire. At this very moment, Russian tanks are shooting at nuclear reactor blocks. These are tanks equipped with thermal vision devices, so they know where they are shooting. They were prepared for this. The Ukrainian foreign minister shared some specifics. He said the Russian army fired on the plant from all sides. Let me quote from his statement. If it blows up, it will be 10 times larger than Chernobyl. Russians must immediately cease the fire, allow firefighters establish a security zone. Earlier today, we saw firefighters at the scene. They doused the fire, but the world panicked. We can think of multiple reasons why. Number one, the facility itself. It cannot guard itself against a full-scale war. Those who built this complex, this nuclear facility, perhaps never factored the threat of a war. The Zaporizhia nuclear plant was built during the Soviet era. That's when Ukraine was still part of the Soviet Union. The reactors were built out in the open and not underground. That's where they stand today. And that's why they're vulnerable to attacks. Reason number two, the reactors are quite old. Some of them were designed and built half a century ago in the 1970s. Now, usually any reactor is said to have a lifespan of 40 years. So these reactors are already running beyond their expiry date. They still supply electricity, but they may not be strong enough to survive Russian bullets. Reason number three, and perhaps the biggest worry, is what Russia is doing. They're conducting military operations around this facility, even when the threat is obvious. What is Moscow's defense? It denies the attack. It calls an attack an act of Ukrainian sabotage. Leaving the building, a Ukrainian sabotage group set fire to the training building. The fire brigades that arrived at the building put the fire out of the premises. At the time of the provocation, none of the full-time employees of the power plant was in the training building. Currently, the staff of Zaporizhia nuclear power plant continues to work as usual, maintains the power plant facilities and monitors the radioactive situation. The radioactive background in the area of the nuclear power plant is normal. So Russia denies attacking the nuclear facility and now claims full control of it. A nuclear catastrophe, like we've been saying, has been averted. What happens next? Will the West send troops to protect nuclear facilities? Can it ensure that nuclear reactors are not caught in the crossfire? U.S. President Joe Biden spoke with Zelensky. All he could come up with a statement in support of Ukraine. Biden has urged Russia to cease military activities near the site. Boris Johnson, meanwhile, wants an emergency session of the United Nations Security Council. The European Union is promising more sanctions on Russia. So here's what you have. Condemnation, emergency meetings and sanctions. Basically more of the same and clearly not enough to stop the war. The Ukrainians have re realized that they are on their own here. Many turned up near the nuclear plant to try to stop the Russian forces. We haven't been able to verify when this happened. These locals are also building barriers with tires, vehicles and metal. In fact, one of the barricades is so large even satellites in space can see it. These are acts of courage in a war that Ukraine has a very